Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know in the comment section below and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0, our podcast diving in with Funny and Jesse, our Patreon, Funny and Jesse, the links are in the description box, so just feel free to click on them and enjoy the content that we're putting out. A big shout out to the people that keep on subscribing, that are subscribed. Thank you very much, you guys are the best. May you stay blessed and I hope you're doing alright. So today we're going to be reacting to this. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're going to be up reacting to the army of satan part 18 changing the creation of allah so without wasting time let's get into the video Shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala four things. He said, Wallah udhillannahum. He said, I will lead them astray. And you look at majority of humanity today, instead of becoming the servants of Rahman, they are the servants of Shaitan. Then he said, Wallah umanniyannahum. And he said, I will give them unto their false passions and their desires. And subhanAllah, you can broadly define false passions and desires into two. One are your carnal desires, your desire for the flesh. And you look at our society, how it, how it has succumbed to the wish of shaitan. Really, you look into our society today, that it is a sex-driven society. It is a sex-mad society. That the society promotes sex as long as, long as you have safe sex, because according to them, it's a physical thing you carry on whilst islamically it's a spiritual thing when a husband comes to his wife he recites duas and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguards that child and the ulama write that this is the first right of the child because it's a spiritual thing and you look at our society today that if by the age of 16 you haven't broken your virginity there's something wrong with you this is what society promotes and this is why out of the seven people who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will be that young man fi ibadatillah, who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first form is your carnal desire. Yannahum, I will give them unto the carnal desires. The second, that shaitan will delude you in believing into false aspirations of this dunya. He will be, make you believe in false aspirations of this dunya. And he will make this dunya the purpose of your life. Not only will he make this dunya the purpose of your life, he will not give you time to even think about the purpose of your life. And subhanAllah, how you, how you see how the promise of shaitan is coming to pass. You know, they give you your TV sets, and then they give you your videos, and then they give you your DVDs, and then they give you your satellite channels, so you have more channels than you, you can even count. And then they give you your mobile phones, and then they give you voice activated mobile phones, and then they give you your camera phones, and then they give you your video phones, and then they give you the internet, and then they give the internet on your mobile phone. Like, like, so like the posters say, you can shop until you drop dead. And when you drop dead, the same shaitan will say, La talumuni, lumu and fusakum. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I called you and you oblige. And you will be suckered like the billions who were suckered before you. The billions who were suckered before you. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tansa nasiba kamina dunya. Do not forget your portion of this dunya. And Imam Qurtubi says, Your portion of this dunya is your kafan. Your portion of the, your, this dunya is your kafan. That the only thing that you will take from this dunya is your kafan. The third promise of shaitan was anami. I will command them and they will slit the air of the cattle. 
What the mushrikeen would do is that they would slit the air and they would slit the animal and they would let on the name of their gods and they would let it walk. of Tafsir Mazri mentions that this means this means that a time will come where shaitan will tell man to disfigure the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see this today really you look into our society a consumer society where they try to create chickens without feathers they try to create chickens without feathers where recently in Switzerland they found a fruit fly and from that fruit fly they found a gene which they dubbed eyeless and when they noted that wherever they injected this gene an eye would grow and they injected this gene on 14 places of this dragon on this fruit fly and on 14 places on the anatomy of the fruit fly eyes grew see this is man playing God, playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't stop there. You look at those who reach the pinnacle of success. Really, look at those people who reach the pinnacle of success. Those like Michael Jackson. You know, the guy was a good looking person a few years ago. But he, he reaches the pinnacle of success and then he's deluded by the dunya. He even thinks that there must be some more contentment out there. But doesn't really realize that the only contentment is the contentment of the heart. The only time you can really have contentment is when you recognize your creator. And then what does he do? He starts playing around with his features. He starts disfiguring his features. And now you look the way the guy doesn't even look like a human being. And the fourth promise of shaitan is, I will command them and they will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. You know, the traditional interpretation for this verse was, to shave the beard was to change the creation of Allah because this was a sign of a man. To pluck the eyebrows was a sign of change, a sign of changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trans transcends time and space, it is relevant for all time because it's a guidance until the final day. Today, it relates to your GM foods. This is changing the normal process. Changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, when they take the antifreeze gene from the Arctic fish and they inject it into your tomatoes so they have longer shelf lives, this is playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because believe it or not, fish don't have relationships with tomatoes. It doesn't work like that. This is GM food. You're playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But worse than that, is those girls who come on the TV set and they say, Oh, I'm a man caged in the body of a woman. I'm a woman who's in the body of a man. And these are people who change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look, what could be a greater change in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What could be a greater change in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That a man transforms into a woman and a woman transforms into a man. And this was the fourth promise of shaitan. And you see it coming to pass today. What greater change could there be that a man becomes a woman and a woman becomes a man?
The Prophet ﷺ said, Hold on to the book of Allah. فِيهِ نَبَأُ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ وَخَبْرُ مَا بَعْدُكُمْ وَحُكْمُ مَا بَيْنَكُمْ And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a guy, is a hukum between you. It is a thing which passes verdict between you. هُوَ الْفَصْلِ لَيْسَ بِالْحَصْلِ It is a thing which differentiates between right and wrong. And it is not jest. And if you take it a jest, then listen to the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Listen to the words again. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever seeks guidance is other than the book of Allah because of arrogance, because he believes that guidance lies in some other philosophy, some other ideology, other than the book of Allah, then Allah will break his neck. Allah will break his neck. And whoever seeks guidance in other than the book of Allah, Allah will lead them astray. Really, really, you don't have to go past these two sentences to understand why the Muslim Ummah is in the decadence that it is in today. Do you? The Prophet ﷺ articulated this 1400 years ago that when the Muslim will think that they honor lie somewhere else, that Allah will disgrace them. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. These were a group of people who were regarded by the rest of humanity as, as philosophically. And then the Prophet ﷺ came and he transformed these people. He brought an impetus, he brought a drive, and this was Islam. And then these very people who were regarded as the worst of people became the best of people to walk upon this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. What was it? It was Islam. See, for other people, other philosophies will work. For other people, other ideologies will work. But for the Muslims, nothing besides Islam will work. Because this is Ummah regarding what Allah, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala articulates in the Quran. Kuntum khayra ummati ukhrijat lin nas. Ta'maruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna nil munkar. That you are the best of creation. You are taken out for mankind. Now, if you think that your Isra lies in some other philosophy and ideology, you're deluded. The only time the Muslims had respect were when they held on to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at history. And then when they turned away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah turned away from them. And this is why we find ourselves in the decadence that we do today. Look at the state of the Muslims. And until we realize that the problem that we have today is because we have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. We go back to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and find our remedy. But the problem is that we look for remedies everywhere else other than where we should. And this is why we're in a sick state. Aren't we sick today? Aren't the minds of the youth confused? What should we hold on to? Aren't the hearts sick? Because society has many impulses. It will tell you, pull you in many directions. And then the more direction you go, the more confused you will be. Because we are pulled in so many directions. The minds are sick. The hearts are sick. The brains are confused. And the only thing which remedies seasickness is what? That when you come up to the top deck, and you look at something which is totally straight, totally straight, like the horizon, then all the confusion is removed. And similarly, there is only one guidance for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state this, states this in the beginning of Surah Qaf. He says, Alhamdulillahi allazi anzala ala abdil kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has revealed on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his servant a book and he has left no crookedness in it. This was an interesting um, video. So many things are happening. As much as many people are enthusiastic about technology, we should know that there's the bad side of technology as well. I think I'm kind of old school when it comes to stuff. Whatever the case is, if I had a chance now to write a letter, I'll be the first one to write it just to communicate with someone. And I mean, people are different. I guess technology 
does make things easier for us but we should also look at the downsides another thing was the first point that was made i mean it's become such a normal thing now that even some parents are reluctant about it children are out there getting worried about not even worried going wild about doing such things but then i mean it's our choice it's up to us to take care of our souls and how we and how we live they were talking about plucking eyebrows uh changing for people people go extremes to change their faces the guy with the horns there's another girl that uh had her tongue she wanted it to be like a snake's tongue people are going overboard with things i don't know why they do it but i'm sure they have the their crazy reasons for doing such things let's appreciate how god has created us let's appreciate be it our hair be it our um faces be it our bodies i think we should be happy with the way we are because of same media we're not uh confident and comfortable with the way we look which is a bad thing, which is a sad thing. That's why we should surround with people that will remind us every day that you're fine. Fine in the sense that you don't have to change anything about yourself to please the world, to please anyone else. Because what matters at the end of the day is the relationship between you and God and no one else. Otherwise, this was very, very interesting. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video